So today we'll be discussing about network components. Okay. Yes, please. So discussing about network components, again, first we'll talk about what is a network. How do you define a network? If you had to define the network, how would you define it? Connection of nodes. Connection of nodes. Okay. Simply, we'll so why we require a network for the communication. And we had the communication earlier as well, but there were certain problems and limitations of the communication. Like we were having the problem with time. The time taken between the communication or for the communication was used. Okay. So that's why not a good choice. Security, reliability, integrity. Lots of problems were there, right? But basically, if we discuss what your network is doing, okay, what is the network? The connection, is it? Right? The connection between the two nodes. So if you want to define the network, we can see the interconnection. Between. Two or more nodes. That is what your network. Okay. Okay, correct. Then after why network? Or I if I say why we require network. What are the benefits we get with the network? So in the last class also this thing we discussed mm -hmm. that network is going to increase the security of your communication okay as well as data integrity will be higher or whatever the things you are transferring between the two nodes okay so everything see here i'll ask you what is information what is information Getting something that way. Hmm? Getting something that way. Getting something? That way. No, no, no. I'm asking what is information? Data. Data. data is a meaningful data. Information is a meaningful data. And a data can be anything. Yeah. Data can be meaningless, but when it comes to the meaningful data, that becomes information. Okay. So either you can say data integrity or information integrity. Okay, so let's say integrity. So if we discuss in your network, whatever is traveling inside your network, the communication is happening between two nodes, they are exchanging information. Okay, so what is that? What they are exchanging basically? Whatever you transfer, whether it is file, it is folder, it is like music, anything it is, that will be information. Information travels inside your network okay now is it just the information that travels inside your network because after encryption what your information becomes binary binary code or no encryption after encryption what is encryption non -human not human understandable now that is not meaningful so that will become data after encryption, it will become data. Without encryption, it is information. Okay. So data integrity is there. Reliability is there. Right. Then what else? Speed of communication is high. Right. Time taken is less. Correct. Does it affect the cost? Does your network provide you the facility of reduced cost? How? Does your network provide you the facility of reduced cost? If you are having a network and if you are not having a network, in both cases, let's say for example, these are again two nodes. Node one. Node two, or PC one, PC two. 
this is PC one. This is PC. So when you want to transfer data between these two nodes, so one scenario, let's consider they are not connected. We are not having the network. And second scenario, let's consider they are connected. Now tell me, in which of the scenario will have higher cost? First one. First one. Why? So, for example, if I need to cross the data from PC one to PC two in first scenario, mm, then the extra device for the bad drive. So here also you need cable. Here also we need cable. But cable is cheaper, yes. Cable is cheaper. Really. Maybe. <laughs> How come? A cable, let's say, just to connect one system is here, another system is here. How big cable I will need? One feet. Correct. So comparing the cost of one feet cable with the cost of pen drive, which one, which option will be cheaper? Cable. Right. This will be cheaper. Okay. But what if one system is here? And second system is on the first floor. Now, cable cost will be higher. So now, in which, how can I say that my network is going to provide me with the facility of reduced cost? Yes, think how. It will depend on the size of data. How much data you want to copy. Let's say, for example, I just want to copy one GB of information. Right? I just want to copy one GB of information. So when I want to copy one GB of information from PC1 to PC2, what I can use? I can use a 2 GB pen drive. Or let's consider minimum 4 GB is there. So 4 GB. What is the cost? Hardly, I think, 200, 300 rupees. Correct. Okay. And in that scenario, let's consider when I want to purchase a cable from third floor to first floor, that will be costly. Okay. Okay. Now, what if the size becomes 4 GB? What if the size becomes 4 GB? Okay. You'll say still 4 GB panda is sufficient. Okay. What if my data size is 8 GB? Now what? Can I use a 4 GB pen drive? No, Why? No. I can use, right? I can copy it two times. But ultimately, which factor will be affected? Time. Time. Time factor will be affected. I can use it two times. Now another case, what if that 8 GB is a single file? I cannot break it. So in that scenario, I'll have to go with the Eight GB pen drive. Okay. What if data becomes fifty GB? In that scenario, still I have four GB pen drive. Let's say these are separate files. Now, how many times I'll have to copy? Divide with four. Right. Around twelve to fifteen times. Okay. So, what if it becomes one TB? Every time, either you will have to go with a higher end device, more capacity device, right? Or else you will have to compromise with the time. Let's say you have two systems very close to each other. You are not having the network. You have to copy 500 GB of data from this system to another system. How many times you will use the 4 GB pen drive? You will get exhausted because first you will copy from the PC to pen drive. Then you'll plug it in the another system. Then you'll copy it there. Again, come here, format the pen drive, copy the new data. Again, copy it there. Again, format. Repetitive task. Right? Hectic task. Right? So not a good choice. So that's why, see, now consider 1 TB of information is there. Now I need to buy what? 1 TB pen drive. Is it available? First of all, one TB pen drive. Memory cards are available. Okay, let's say pen drive also available. Otherwise, we have the hard disk options. 
two TBs, four TBs, right? We have these options. Now, when we go purchasing these options, when we go for purchasing these things, let's say if you buy one TB at this, okay, here one more question I have for you. What is the difference between SSD and SDD? HDD is an old one. It is based on a type of CD from who is running. And second is based on chips. SSD is a solid state, right? So it doesn't be a lot of a chip type. Okay. So you can say this is a semiconductor device, right? Mm -hmm. Means kind of you can say like a memory card or your pen drive one. Okay. But here SDD. In SDD, what happens if you see internal structure of an SDD? So it's just like a CD only. Okay, there will be a disk rotating inside. Okay, so whenever you let's say you connect an SDD to your system and you touch the SDD, you will feel something is rotating. Okay, so see here, there's a rotor head and a reader. <clears throat> see, this is how it is. So this is a kind of CD, okay? And this is the reader. So if you have seen like old music systems, what you call them, I just don't remember the name, okay? So in them, they used to have a reader and they used to put it on the CD and then it is used to play the music. Same kind of scenarios there, okay? That it will move from one place to another place to read the data and the CD will rotate. That's why it is suggested that whenever you are having an SDD, you should take care of it. Otherwise, if it will fall, there are chances that it might damage the SDD. Okay. So this is how your SDD looks like. And if we discuss about SSD, SSD is nothing but a chip-based device, semiconductor device. Okay. This, see, these are two types of SSDs. Okay. So what will happen? Even if this falls, the chips are not going to fall away. So still intact. Okay, plus battery speed. Why? Because compared to the SDD, if you see in SDD, this router has to physically move from one place to another place to read the data. Okay, so this will take time, and this completely depend on this motor. Inside there, there is a motor that is going to rotate this thing. Okay, and same thing. If we see here, is there any physical part, rotating part? No. So everything will be electronically controlled. So you can easily read the data. Okay. <clears throat> so that's why your SSD is faster. So now either you go with the SSD, let's say if you purchase an SSD for one TB. Okay. So what is the cost? Eight to nine thousand. Eight to nine thousand. Right now it is cheaper. Depends on the vendor. Completely depend on the vendor. Also, depend on the speed. The speed always, uh, almost everyone will tell you the same, but actual speed will be different. Okay. But usually, let's say if we become vendor specific. Okay. So if you go with uh, some like common vendors, like there is a crucial company that is creating the SSDs. Okay. Let me directly show you in the mission. Let's say I'm looking for one TV SSD. Okay. See, this is 6,454, 5,499. But if you go with other vendors, okay, this is SanDisk, 6,800. Okay. Samsung, this is 7,600. Okay. Let's go with the cheapest option. Let's say this one. 5,500, correct? So here one TB is costing me how much? 5,500, right? And these two systems are very close to each other, correct? And I have to spend how much? 5,500 to copy one TB of information from one TB, one system to another system. 
Now, if I want to buy cable, hardly I would need one feet of cable. Correct. Okay. Now what? This cable, let's say, will cost me around thousand rupees. This is not going to cost thousand rupees, but let's say the best quality cable we have purchased. Okay. So it will cost me around thousand rupees. Correct. And I have connected these two systems. Now with this one TB of hard disk, how much data I can copy at a time? One TB. Now what if I had I have to copy hundred TB? No choice. Again, I have to go with a higher storage device. But what have, will happen in this case? Do I need to buy a new cable? No. Through the same cable, it will travel whether it is 1 MB, 1 TB, or 100 TB. Doesn't matter. So that's why it is going to give you a reduced cost. Because here we do, do not depend on the size of the data. And here we depend on the size of data. Okay. Now, again, even if you buy this thing, let's say SSD you have purchased. Okay. So again, you will copy from PC1 to SSD, then you will copy it to the PC2. Right. Then again, copy some more data, again, copy it to the PC2. Time factor is also getting affected. Right. Now, what will happen? In this case, let's say I have purchased 10 GBPS cables. Because I have spent 1000 rupees, so I might get one feet of 10 GBPS cable or 40 GBPS cable. So the time factor will also be reduced. So here, this is why network is better option. This is clear. That in case of network, we do not depend on the size of the data that how much data I want to copy. Even if this is a 100 Mbps cable, still it is going to be have better opportunity than these things. Why? Because you are not still depending on the size of the data. That how much data you want to copy from one system to another system. Okay. And if we go with the fiber, far better options. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, how the entire world is connected? Right now, we are able to have communication with the satellite. entire world. Hmm? Satellite. satellite, sure. Fiber. Fiber. But how? Have you seen any cables going from India to no, Australia? Underwater. Underwater. Underwater cables. Entire world is connected through the optical fiber cables that are laying under the sea bed. Okay, see how. Want to see? It? <clears throat> Submarine cable map. This is how the world is connected. Okay, these are optical fiber cables that are connecting the entire world through the sea. Okay. <clears throat> See. Entire world is connected. Now if you see, let's say this is India. You see multiple points are connected to the India also. So if, if you are not like, if you're not able to go from one path, you have certain different other paths. So still you will be connected. So if one link is down, doesn't matter. We still have backup options. And that's why you never see internet going down. Okay. Okay. Maybe in your area, government has disabled the DNS and everything to stop the internet for a while. But the entire country or entire world internet will never go down. Okay. Now, sometimes you see that in cases of earthquake, you get see that, okay, the internet services to that country is down. Or that city is down. Why? Because these cables are affected. Okay. And these cables are going under continuous maintenance. Okay. It's not like, okay, they have put the cables once and then forget it. No. Regular maintenance. <clears throat> this is clear. 